When you see them get destructive, then I will run them. <laughs> but they're pretty good now. Today I want to just talk to you in keeping with, with the season that we are in. I want to talk to you about the Passover. I want us to take a look at the Passover through the blood of Yeshua the Messiah. And I want to share about seven principles from the scripture to show the importance of the power of the blood. Which I believe in some way we have yet to realize its significance. I trust that this session will help us to appreciate the blood more once we would have left this place today. I know most of our attention is placed on the death of Yeshua, and that is significant. But how important is the blood? Everybody say the blood. The blood of Yeshua to the process. How important is the blood of Yeshua to the process? In the very first experience. In Egypt, then the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. Yahweh gave Moses some command, told him that it was the tenth day, prepare the people to come out on the fourteenth, and he also told them to prepare for the Passover. You all know the story. Time wouldn't give us; we won't have the time to read it, but I'll just. To get to the point I want to make. And he said, I want you to take a lamb without blemish. Kill it. Let every family kill one. Eat it. Eat it at a specific time. With your shoes on your foot and all of that nice stuff. So put it on the lentil of your door or your house. And say, when I see the blood, I will pass over. That is significant because what moved Yahweh in the midst of the Passover celebration was to focus upon his blood. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. He died, the animal died, but he said, When I see, he didn't say, When I see the animal. He said, You eat that. But when I see the blood, I will pass over. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. And it's in this. Way that I'm going to talk to you. Why the blood? Why when you see the blood, he will pass over? Father, we just bless you. And we just give you thanks that you will bless the eyes and the mind of your people, the ears of your people, that we will hear and we will grow as we go into this season, help us to develop a deeper appreciation for the significance of your blood that was shared once and for all. Holy Spirit, as I decrease, increase, enlighten all of us as we seek to know you better through the blood of Yeshua. From the very beginning, with Adam and Eve, there were implications of blood sacrifice very beginning and we know the story and I want us to turn quickly to it God that's at Genesis 2 21 Yahweh told that Adam and his his wife he killed an animal and what did they do he covered them he took the skin and he made what covering or clothes for Adam and Eve and it was an implication that Yahweh has forgiven them and blood was implied. In order to get the skin, you cannot get the skin of an animal without what? Shedding blood. Everybody agree? You had to shed blood to get the skin of the animal. How is that? Is that true? 
All right. Let's go to. Blood was implied 
and offered or had to be shared, okay, from these offering. So Yeshua ordered it because of the blood that was released from these offering. Hallelujah, somebody. When we come into 500 years of Noah, as we look down to the lineage of Noah, we come to Abraham. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. And we see with Abraham another experience. Only this time, Abraham wanted to offer his son. We know it's a typology of who? Yeshua Messiah. But he couldn't pay the price, so Yahweh didn't allow him to kill his son. No way. Couldn't do it because, my God, he he had a sinful nature. His blood couldn't do. I said, I don't want you, yes, brother. I just want you to, I want to test your faithfulness to me. Hallelujah. And so, what happened? Instead of the sun being destroyed, we found that there was a what? Our alarm in the ticket. Let's read it. Let's read it quickly. And what happened as a result of the, the, the ram being in the ticket? Verse, verse, verse 2. And he said, Take now thy son, 22, and 2, thy only son Isaac, from whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him therefore a what? Burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will sh- uh, tell thee of. From that the way stated. Way stated. He was offering for what? A burnt offering, right? Yes. You sure love burnt offering? Oh yes. Way 13 says this. And Abraham lifted up his eyes after Yeshua tested him, and looked and behold behind him. A ram caught in a what? In the ticket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. So we see now a ram now is being offered up for burnt offering. Here again is the shedding of blood. With every offering, blood was tied to it. With every offering, when we move from Abraham and we come to Moses, we see something very significant on Mount Sinai. So far we deal with Mount Ararat. Uh, now we to Mount Sinai. I want you to follow me now. It's very important. We're going somewhere. Moses and the children of Israel on Mount Sinai. And we see now they are offering burnt offering unto Yahweh which again imply what? The shedding of blood. Go to Exodus chapter 24 and let's look at something here. Exodus chapter 24 and we're going to see something here very powerful. And he said unto Moses, Exodus 24, come up, everybody get the Bible open, I want you to follow me. Come up unto unto Yahweh, thou and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu and seventh of the el- and seventy how much seventy of the elders of Israel and worship of Pharaoh and Moses alone shall come up near Yahweh but they shall not come nigh neither shall the people go up with them that's your man to five and four and Moses let's read, let's read three and Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh and all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said all the words which Yahweh has said we will do so you see now the covenant the old covenant being established with the children of Israel but what happens after that what seals the old covenant and Moses right verse 4 wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar unto the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Verse 5. And he sent young men of what? The children of Israel, which offered what? Burnt offerings and sacrifices, peace offering, offering of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in a basin. You see, every time these burnt offerings were given, blood was shed. So we see now Moses get the covenant and he is using blood. And Moses took half of the blood and put in the blood basin and half.
ark of the blood he sprinkled on the rock outer and he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people and they said all that Yahweh had said we will do and be obedient so you see the blood covenant here the blood is attached to what the covenant the old covenant and Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said what did he take what did he do with the blood sprinkle it on the people Behold the blood of the covenant which Yahweh had made with you concerning all these words. So we see blood played a very integral part with the covenants of Yahweh. Both old and both new. But we're looking at the old one now. I want to read on and I want to share with you something Yahweh shared with me over the other words. And it blessed me and I trust it will bless you as well. Then when of Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel of sorry, seventy of the elders of Israel. Very well. Now I want you to focus on voice ten. Everybody look at voice ten. And they saw read it. And they saw who? They saw the God of Israel. Now, we have been told many times that nobody can see God. Nobody has ever seen God and lived. You all ever hear that before? The scripture tells it, they, and they saw the God of Israel. Listen, who are these who saw the God of Israel? <coughs> Moses and the 70 elders. And, the, and they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, under whose feet, Yahweh feet, who they saw, as it were a pale work of a sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, who, he, who God, laid not his hand. In other words, God didn't judge them. All slew. They saw God and did eat and drink. I want you to stop here. They saw God and they stopped and drank. And God never did anything with them. God came down on a mountain and revealed himself to Israel and the 70 elders. Hallelujah. In this process, when the old covenant were being established among Sinai. They saw God. We have been told nobody ever saw God. Read it. It's 9 and 10. They bless me. I trust it will bless you too. They saw God. All of them. They saw His feet. They saw His presence. And it went on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up unto me. Read the story. It's a beautiful, powerful voice of Scripture. When God revealed Himself to the children of Israel, when they came, to establish the covenant. Now what I want us to show you, even as we would look at the fact that the blood is tied closely to the covenant. I want us to look for a short period at the law of the old covenant and the blood. I want to point out something. Go with me to Exodus 3. Okay, foundation. Talking fast, or walking here. Exodus 30 and verse 10. And Aaron, the high priest, shall make an atonement upon the horns of the altar of incense. That it is the altar of incense. Once in a year, with the blood of what? The sin offering of atonement. Once in a year shall you make atonement upon it throughout your generation. It is most holy unto Yahweh. So, what we're saying here now is the atonement was made with blood on the incense, or in altar of incense. That altar of incense was there. Right before, like Minister Riley took time on a few weeks, right before the whale in the tabernacle. So the blood there 
was offered there for what? The atonement by Aaron before it went into the most holy place. So we see the connection now with what? The blood and the atonement. So what can we learn from this situation? When the blood was shed, what happened initially? What was the reason the blood was shed for? When the blood was shed, the blood was shed to atone for what? Sin. The sin of the people. It was the blood that made atonement for the people. Hallelujah, somebody. While the death was very significant, it was the blood. You see, if Yeshua had died without shedding his blood, we would not have saved him. Come on, somebody. He just couldn't die, Minister Lloyd. He had to share his blood. If they did this, he just died like me and you. They had to kill him. They had to bruise him. They had to rip him. He wouldn't have been fulfilling the old covenant if he didn't share his blood. He had to share his blood. For us to have a savior. For us to have salvation. Hallelujah, somebody. We want to bring up the importance of the blood. Not negating the debt. So that we can develop appreciation. Hallelujah. For the blood of Yeshua. Without the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. He had to die. He couldn't just lay the hammer and fall asleep and dead. No, 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 no. The devil had to kill him and bruise him up. Some blood had to shed somewhere. After all, he came to fulfill what? The old covenant. And the old covenant was the pattern. So under the law, the blood was shed for what purpose? That is for the remission of sin. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Under the old covenant. Yeah. The children, if so if you know, the high priest would go in once a year. Mm-hmm. We know that. But on a regular basis, they would get killed up and they would do something in the name of blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. And they would go and they put their hand on it and the blood was shared. Mm-hmm. And the blood was shared and, you know, automatically the animal died. Mm-hmm. But the significant was the blood. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Without the shedding of blood, there ain't no. Hallelujah. But blood was important. And this lesson is to help us develop an appreciation for the blood of Yeshua. And the power that is tied into his blood. Whenever sin was committed, it was committed because we know that sin is the what? Transgression of the law. So whenever the blood was shed, it was shed for sin. And sin is the what? Transgression of the law. So the blood come now to do what? To make atonement for the breaking of the law. Hallelujah. Let me break Yahweh's law. Yahweh was faithful with the nation of Israel. And he said, look, this is my holy standard. Once a year, you come before me with blood. When you break these things, after all, they took the blood into the most holy place where the commandment was in the ark of the testament and sprinkled it by the mercy seat. Because that was what was broken. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah, and when they should have sin, they would share the blood. Yes, and they would, as a result of that, they would go free yeah. for another year. Yeah. The gold brother didn't last for a year. He had no strength to it. Okay. But what we see was a pattern. And also what we see was how significant yeah. Yahweh's laws was. Oh, when you break it. My, my. When you break it. But we see a little difference now when we come into the new covenant. We see now the whole order change. When you don't need no animal sacrifice no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you need better than an old priesthood no more? And the old priesthood was a well, the, the highlight of the priesthood had to do with what? The blood sacrifice. It was round the blood. Everything was, was springboard from the blood. The blood. The blood. 
That's why Yeshua come. And he had to share his blood. He had to share his blood for what? So that we can fulfill his law. Hallelujah. He shared his blood that we can fulfill his laws. He died and we can carry out his law and the righteousness of the law. Hallelujah. I don't want that to do it. Yeshua blood, like it made it possible under the all for them to have forgiveness of breaking that holy thing. Yeshua blood come now. I said once and for all, I can fix this month. I can change the order. Now when you break it, you don't have to go through it. You don't have to for nothing. I am that one. Hallelujah. But my righteous standards stand right here. Because the new covenant tells us when we sin, we what? Try to miss the Lord. But this time now, it's a sure blood. It is a sure blood. Hallelujah. He died that we may walk in his Righteousness. He died that we may fulfill the righteousness of the Lord. Now let's look quickly at the new covenant and the blood. And looking at the new covenant and the blood, I want to point, twist, challenge your mind to look at the spirit and the blood. We talk about the law and the blood. What relation the spirit had with the blood? Before the Holy Spirit, I want you to hear this. Before the Holy Spirit could be bestowed in man. The outpouring of the blood of the Lamb of God had to take place. Before the Holy Spirit could have been bestowed back in man, the blood, say the blood everybody, had to ready be shared. Now, let's look at it. The word of God said there's three that give this in heaven. The Father, the Word, no, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the night, the water, the blood, and the Spirit. Now, how we see this played out? It's right there in the feast, you know. When we understand the way pattern, we can't go wrong with the Lord. Look at this. The water, when Yeshua began his ministry, was referring to what? The baptism of Yahweh. Remember? When he was released? Yes. And the water of baptism and the Holy Spirit leave there. Yeah, yeah. The next thing, the significance then of the blood comes at Calvary. Yeah. The water, the blood was had, had to come over there. At Calvary, yeah. the blood was shared. Yeah. And the next move was for Yahweh it was 50 days later when what? Yeah. The Holy Spirit yeah. came into yeah. being. Yeah. So you see the water. Then you see the blood, then you see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit couldn't receive the blood because the blood had to do what? It is the death, resurrection. The blood had to be shed on Calvary for the sin of man. You have to go through the blood before the Holy Spirit can do any work on you and I. Hallelujah, somebody. We have to go through the blood. The Holy Spirit couldn't live with us until the blood, oh come on somebody, had been applied and shed by the one who came to share his blood. So the first thing he did was die. The first thing he did was share his blood. And 50 days later, here comes the Holy Spirit. Because whose blood was that who was shared? The water, the blood, and the Holy Spirit. In the same path. Hallelujah. Water baptism. Blood that spread yes. in the dead and then the Holy Spirit show up now to yes. execute that yes. work. The Holy Spirit couldn't work without the blood. Couldn't do no work without the blood. Hallelujah. So Yeshua had to come to, to do a process in the earth before the Holy Spirit could teach you. Now I finish, I will go and I will send you a comforter who would lead you and guide you into all truth. Yes. Let's go to Acts 20 and 28. See, the Holy Spirit and the blood, they work hand in hand. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. They go hand in hand. Bless you, in the name of Calvary. Yeah. They work hand in hand. Yeah. 27, Acts 20, 27. For I have, this is Paul speaking. For I am no 
option to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And you better to say this very powerful voice in scripture. Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost, who? The Holy Ghost had made you overseers, talking to the other disciples and apostles, to feed the church of Elohim, which he, who? The Holy Ghost had punches with his own blood. The Holy Ghost had punches with his own blood. You see the connection between the Holy Spirit and the blood? Yes. Oh, hallelujah. So the blood comes, the Holy Spirit gets natural. They work together. We have been punches, the Holy Ghost punches us with what? His own blood. Not my own blood, because the Holy Spirit is God. God's blood. That Elohim blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the blood is a very integral part to our salvation. Yeah, yeah. That's why when we come in the season of this, we give you many thanks. Right, right, right. We praise yeah. Him and thank Him for the blood. Yeah. Let the people understanding yeah. of what the blood was all about. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, do you know? Let's look at the blood a little further. Do you know? It was the blood I'll get to that. Why is it that the Holy Spirit then cannot do anything without the blood? Why? The reason why the Holy Spirit cannot do anything without the blood is because this is this the life is in the Hallelujah. The life is in the blood. Yes. That's why it's so important. The life is in the flesh. The life is in the blood. That's why I couldn't use your eye blood. The blood has come straight from heaven. The life. Man can't live without the blood. The minute the blood comes on the body, it's a dead man. Yahweh created us that way. So the Holy Spirit knows the importance of the blood. Yes. That's why when you have Yeshua come, it was the blood what was significant. Yes. That's why he could just lay down and force people die. He had to shed his blood to pay the penalty for the remission of shedding of blood. There is no one. And that is so because the life is in the blood. Now I want you to turn to me and see this principle in the old scripture, in the old covenant. Let's look quickly at Leviticus chapter 17. I want you to, I want to take the time with this. Let's look at this principle in the old covenant. This ain't no new covenant teaching. This is old. 